I'll make a motion to open our uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting on October 1st, 2020 at 5 p.m. Um, online on our Zoom meeting and also on the at the um, main meeting room, uh, the municipal offices in, in Deerfield at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Can I open the planning board meeting now? Sure, please. Thank you, John. Uh, this is John Wade, chair of the planning board. I'd like to open the meeting on October of October 1st, 5 p.m. Um, planning board of the town of Deerfield online under all the direction from the governor. And um, if we can just do a roll call, um, planning board members, uh, Anna Lee, are you present? Present. Denise. Present. Paul. Present. Rachel. Max. Um, and Mary. John Waite here. So we've got four, so we can uh, we can open the meeting. Great. Well, welcome. Great. I, I can't thank you enough for, for quick, you know, coming around and, and getting to meet with us. We've been scrambling to try and get all this together between uh, town council and all. And um, I really appreciate you, you the planning board, working with the select board to try and move this process forward if we can get it, you know, completed. So so we've been working on stuff, and I know that um, Lisa updated the final kind of text or for what we have so far in the text and sent that out today. And I'm not sure if anyone had a chance to read it because, you know, it was just a few short hours ago. Um, but I thought we could go over that today. And then I also wanted to kind of go over maps and then um, kind of pick up where we left off and have, have Chris Curtis weigh in on where, where we were, kind of where we are now, and to see if anyone has any changes or questions or things we should still be working on, or if there's any disagreements between us, and just to try and hash that, hash that stuff out. Um, not, uh, let's see, does anyone, I mean, I don't want to speak unless someone else wants to go, I mean, whatever, I don't want to, I don't want to just, Take over the meeting, but if anyone else wants to, to start. No, I think if you can go ahead. And Chris had uh, written an email with a couple of questions, so um, oh, great. you great. know, I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We can all that. That's great. Okay, so um, so really, the, the test we can go through in a minute. And really, I thought um, the maps have been a little bit challenging for me to try and get to get straight so I could kind of show everybody what we're doing. I think not much has changed other than adding a central district. So one of the main changes that the select board had talked about with town council was to, was to really have three marijuana overlay districts to kind of simplify it. And so we would do, um, we would do one um, MO1, which would be retail only. And that would be kind of such as like downtown and the spots in red that we had already discussed. Um, and we could still discuss any of that. Um, MO2 would kind of allow everything other than social consumption. So the, you know, the, uh, a retail area, a cultivation, manufacturing, kind of everything in an MO2 district. And then um, still no, no consumption, social consumption anywhere in the town. Um, MO3, we, I kind of recommended this because we would just do it would be in, in districts that we would only allow manufacturing cultivation only no retail stores um, obviously no consumption but it was in areas that we were not going to have a retail store located um, so we thought we would try for for three districts just to make that easy i'm going to go to the larger board and flip through a couple of shared screens and i tried to set those out a little bit and just to catch our discussion on I'll be right back. I'm trying to talk loud because I know we're out in the world. Um, this, this, is, this map here that I have up right now was the original kind of our, our map that we were working on. Um, oh, it's bad. Second. Um, so this was our, you know, our original map that we had, we had had. This is a draft map from the other planning board discussion. So it had, you know, down at the bottom, it had the, um, the industrial park, which is the MO2, and then it had the smaller sections that already, that already was an MO2 kind of area, and then this is the newer, the bigger purple one here was what we were going to add, and 
And then the rest were going to be retail only. Uh, no cultivation, no manufacturing. Um, and then we had up at, up at the top, we had this section up here, which was, um, which was an ML2 section. But, um, so I'll flip to um, ML1 and ML2. So I printed off from, from um, the town's assessor's map to try and just kind of clarify that a little bit. So down at the bottom is the industrial park. Anything in red here uh, outlined would be an MO2. So that would be cultivation, manufacturing, and retail would be allowed in this area here. Um, and uh, in this area down here, which is currently already our only district. Um, and then we have this area up here is the new district, uh, which would be the MO, MO2, uh, which you know retail, cultivation, and manufacturing would be allowed. And then anything in, per, in this pink area here is that it's just that retail only. That was the section. None of that's changed. This down here and a little sliver over here. Most of it which is developed already. And then the outline of the town district. So these are the current overlay districts for I think it's C1 and C2, um, the commercial districts. So those would only be retail. Anything in pink would be retail only. Um, anything here would be. Uh, ML, anything in red would be the ML2, which would be retail, cultivation, and manufacturing. Um, and then, uh, and then let me see. So then we have uh, ML3 districts. So ML3 is we were really thinking that retail would be an opportunity up here. It's kind of outside of town. It's hard to kind of have a you know our police are not up there as much as they are in a residential or business district. We just felt like. Retail would not be, you know, it's not really driving economic development, you know, to put it on the edge of town. So we were just thinking we probably would just have manufacturing cultivation in this area only. Um, and that would be, that was kind of what we had out in MO2 before. And then um, the other central, this would be a new district, which would be in manufacturing cultivation only, which would be in this central area here. And I'm happy to adjust that anyway. I was trying to find a simplistic way to kind of leave some area in the middle that we, you know, we already have a plant there now. Um, and if anybody wants to adjust that at all, I'm happy to do that. Um, I, don't, I'm not, I don't really have much um, say over exactly where these lines go, but I, I feel like we should have just not retail, nothing other than manufacturing and cultivation. In, in, in that area. Um, so that's really the map that I have right now. This was our original. Nothing has really changed other than making an MO3 and, and getting rid of uh, anything else in the RA district. No other manufacturing, no, no other marijuana in any area. Another MO3, which is the upper quarter, upper quarter of, the, of the town. And then just kind of solidifying these areas here, which we had talked about at that meeting. Uh, of just retail and then and then kind of everything in those MO2s. So that's that, that was kind of the map. If anyone has any questions on those or wants to adjust them or whatever, I'm happy to do that. So the only place, this is Emily, um, the only place for cultivation is in MO2 and then MO2 and MO3. Ah, so ML3 is manufacturing and cultivation, no retail. That's correct, but no retail. Okay, thank you. Hey, Trevor, this is, well, this is Denise. Just to put it into context, first of all, it's sort of hard to see, I'm squinting. Yeah. But um, can, you, can you tell me uh, in the retail space, because I can't really see what, what's there now? So what, what do we have available right now for retail? Well, no, what, what area? You're saying the retail area. I can't tell from this map where it is in town. I know, it's very small. So let me, um, let me help a little bit. Can you see my, my pointer at all, my hand? Yep. Can you zoom in, Trevor, by going to the top plus sign? Yes, yes I can. I, I guess I what can. I'm asking is what other businesses are in close proximity to where the proposed retail? Because I can't figure out where it is. Yeah, so retail right now, if I scroll down, in this bottom section right here is the Deerfield Plastics area, the old Deerfield Plastics in, in that okay. bottom corner. Yep. And so across the street is um, Yankee Handle. Okay. And uh, 
Motel 6, um, all of that kind of area down here, then you break into Waitley and the Sugarloaf Shops and all. Mm -hmm. So that right now is our current retail marijuana overlay district, this little square here. This is right. downtown. Tom is right, right here where my sister yep. is. Um, so that that's an area to discuss whether we want to allow, you know, um, retail downtown or not. Uh, you know, that was brought up before. Uh, we can talk about that tonight. Um, and then across the street is a little bit near Conway Road and um, this little section here. There's a couple of fields and a house, but that's pretty much it. And then, you know, You've got the, um, the fire station is across the way. Um, right. You've got Chase Meat in here, Yankee Candles in here, the, the um, pet uh, hospitals here. And then you get, up, you get up over here, this is the old drive in. Um, so this is kind of that area in, in here where we've got Chase Meat and these really our industrial kind of area that was here. Um, so that was kind of suggested that that would be kind of everything. And then, um, and then up here further on five and ten, which would be, you know, from kind of uh, the discussed Dollar General North on five and ten, is really our commercial district right now, where the, you know, the, the storage facility is, some of our businesses, Greg Dollar Lobby, that kind of thing, up to this end of town. So we were thinking retail only here, no manufacturing up in here, no cultivation. Um, mm -hmm. So that was that, and then um, and then down on the bottom here, um, this is the industrial park right now, and that was already in our kind of that's our current retail cultivation manufacturing was allowed in this area. Mm -hmm. This is pretty much we don't really see that, but maybe in the future, one of the businesses turns over, somebody makes an offer, you know, who knows? But that would be available here. Um, so that, okay. that, uh, that's really kind of where we're at. Is there anything else on the map? Uh, no, thanks for that clarification. I just couldn't figure out what the northern part, what was there now. But thanks. If I go to the central district, um, you know, I, I was trying to just kind of get a section in here that was, uh, you know, allowable. But, but again, if anyone has any suggestions to adjust any of this, happy to take that into account. Um, you know, and then the northern, the northern section was um, central. This was our northern section, which would just be cultivation. This is up at the other end of town where the train station is and the, the quarry and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. or industrial. Trevor, while you, uh, this is Chris Curtis. Um, while you have that other image on the screen, I think that's the most important thing to consider, uh, which was the the addition to the MO3 in the central district. Um, yep. my, my, my question is, um, all of the other overlay districts, the boundaries were, were based on existing zoning districts. And that, yep. that one, yeah, that, that is not based on existing zoning districts. Um, and my question is, how, how, are those, how are those boundaries drawn and, and how can we justify those? So those are those are based on uh, just property line. It was based on parcel only, um, and we already uh, kind of allowed it in that area currently. And so I was just trying to take a section around that area and not allowing it kind of everywhere in town. Talking with council, she said just kind of sketch out where you think it's appropriate. You know, it's where we have it right now. And again, if you feel like we should adjust that any further, I felt like. You know, we have that now. We have, you know, the, the digesters there. Um, we have a plant already. You know, it's, it, you know, that, it's just, it's where, you know, I, I couldn't think of anywhere else in town that we would want to put it um, other than, you know, again, up, up at the other end of town. Uh, but if you want to adjust that anywhere, I'm fine with that. I, you know, I, I don't really, if you want to narrow that, you know, that is some, that's fine too. Um, I don't have any particular. It's, well, I, Chris, I, it's arbitrary. It's arbitrary in the sense that um, we didn't want to look like spot zoning, but we want to encompass the existing um, marijuana facility already there. And we already have, you know, some other, you know, the, the digesters are there. Um, so again, we can bring that in a bit, but a lot of this is, 
is on that digester property is a big parcel here. Um, and then this other parcel, which I think a lot of it got grouped together. I think these lines are a little old. Um, so I think they did consolidate quite a bit of that lot. Um, So is that just one property owner that we're talking about? Uh, there, no, there are a couple others here. Um, this was some farmland. I think there's fields along here. Uh, this is some farmland here. I know this is farm here. This is all farmland. Um, so we were thinking, you know, people wanted to grow in this area. So it was already in this, this section where we allowed it. So, uh, but again, if, if we should pull some of off of five and ten, or some of the, I think some of this is the back side, and then there's a bit of five and ten right here. Um, I wasn't sure, you know, like some of these, I didn't know how detailed you wanted to get into grouping some of these parcels out, or if we would just do that by by cycling review or special permit. You know, uh, obviously you need so many square footage some, anyway. Some of those. Right? When you do a plant like this, so uh, some of those you know, parcels are also protected. Protected. Some of those parcels are also protected. Yeah, right. I'm not sure which ones are, but um, there is a conservation restriction APR on uh, several of those parcels. So, and then, you know, a lot of them are just small enough that they're not going to allow it anyway, so you just don't have the space to do it. So if we want to carve that up even more, that's fine. But you know you can have an overlay district, you just don't have to allow it there. Uh, you know, and have to have a they have to have a, a community host agreement and, and you know site plan review. I think um, the parcel is that um, two parcel is the, where the Marijuana is now. One, it's two. It comes off Child's Cross Road, right, Trevor? I mean, I I'm not sure which one it is. So 16 is the current facility. Uh, I think 19, this large one here, is um, is where the digesters are. Um, yeah. See, yeah, but see that number two. I think that number two is 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 um, the current one. Two and one. Yeah, two and one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where it ended. It's hard to see. You know, it's well, over. Maybe maybe the boundary is, is the uh, roof. And that was the other question I had for town council last night was, you know, do we want to just run that boundary along the roof line? And they were like. You know, they said no, it should be the whole parcel. So, so that's what I, you know, that's kind of where we catch that. But if, um, oops, sorry, if, um, if anybody is just saying, well, it should be boundaries versus, you know, the brook line, that's easier. Or more no, or there's yeah. always, there's always fights when you have divide parcels. We're much better off doing it by parcels. Anybody else have a way in? I mean, anybody have a thought on how to break that up differently? Well, this is John, and I just want to, again, highlight from what we heard at our, our public hearings was that, uh, you know, I think people wanted to get it out of RA <laughs> residential agriculture because it's not, they didn't consider it agriculture really now. Um, so, you know, and, and because we have the one there, I, I you know, I, we have to continue to deal with that. So that's one thing, but not to make it, you know, to try to keep it as minimal as possible, I think. That's fine. Do you, do you want to minimize that a little further then? Well, that gets back to what Carolyn sort of mentioned is about spot zoning. That's, um, I know we want to avoid that. So how do you, we're a little bit of a, that's, that's a, why we a mind. That we wouldn't be interested in really providing any others. Uh, in that area, and, and must be, you know, and must really matter needs to the town. I'm going to ask think a question. Just say, please remember to say your name for minutes purpose. Oh, sure. Thank you. Oh, well, this is Carolyn. I think if you did an analysis of the area, there is 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 Baraway Farm. 
or bars farm no bar away farm yeah and um and this and it ends that bar bar bars farm and it goes up to child's cross road and there's houses there and there's um conservation restricted land so even though it looks like a fairly big district um i think there really isn't much you can do with it john and um it would not it would pass the sniff tip test for spot zoning without actually doing all that much so i guess i wanted to ask one quick question if if in fact we just wanted to uh, sort of let the current cultivator out on mill village road do manufacturing is there another i don't know if it's a bylaw or another way to do it and just say that like they're grandfathered in or something give them the right to do it if we want you know give them the right to apply for it but right. then kind of just not try to do this i feel like we're tiptoeing around this thing if that's what all we're really trying to do is give them the right to cultivate then maybe we just do that instead of trying to make this funny district all around them that i mean that is a possibility i think that's what we thought of first um I'm certainly open to that. We were thinking any current, you know, cultivator would have have that opportunity to also manufacture. Um, I, I was just a little bit of my concern was that we were we were going to take away a huge section of area of the town that we wouldn't allow. Um, you know, we we are giving up a large section of you know pretty much the whole town is the RA district. So I mean, obviously not not everything. But um, so we were thinking, should we leave some some spot uh, to allow it? But um, but you know, I agree, John. That's that's definitely another way to go, and I'm I'm certainly open to that. I don't. I don't have to I don't know. I take away two. Five. I take two. Count my fingers. <laughs> Well, then you say you took two apples, so you have two apples. I think someone needs to mute. <laughs> Sorry, I just switched from my phone to the uh, to the <laughs> your audio. No problem. No problem. Thanks, John. <laughs> um, so, no, um, I can can make I, a good point, John. Uh, this is Chris Curtis. I I think. Um, John's idea makes a lot of sense as well. And um, I had thought actually that town council was going to try to write a section to the bylaw that would allow uh, pre existing uses to have the capability to do manufacturing. Um, I'm not sure if that got communicated to her. Um, but that would be, in my opinion, a, a better route than than having a mm -hmm. really large MO3 district that might potentially have impact on a lot of residential areas. Mm -hmm. I'm certainly okay with that. We just needed to take care of this, yeah. our pre-existing uh, um, manufacturer, uh, you know, cultivator. So we could reach out to Lisa and see if there is, um, you know, a way to write that into the bylaw that, that would allow that. Um, I, I know that was, that, that was a piece of language we saw earlier and, um, and, and that's, I mean, that's, that's fine with me. I, I really, I mean, I think if we have the Northern MO3 district that would allow cultivation and manufacturing, there is a fairly good chunk of land up there. There is space to allow, allow cultivation and manufacturing up in that end. I know that a lot of it's quarry in the train yard, but there is other parcels up in that end that could support that. And then also we have the new M2 district that would allow, you know, some spots closer to town uh, that would allow kind of all, all three options. So um, I could have Casey touch base, you know, tomorrow. I mean, if, if, if the planning board seems to be okay with that, obviously we bring that to a hearing. Um, I mean, we could kind of weigh in and see what you guys think if that's so, a better route to go. I'm, I'm so I'm just, too. I'm just throwing that out there and I'd like to hear from uh, the other planning board members because that's not, you know, Two years ago, we were against manufacturing in the RA districts. Um, I, I, I think we're, I think we're against that. We didn't zone it. Um, right. You know, 
things have changed. I'm, I'm not saying we are for it now. I'm just saying that I, I, what I don't like is the bigger area and doing this kind of gymnastics with the maps. I, I don't like that. Um, so I don't know, Paul was part of that discussion over the past two years. I don't know if he remembers anything or. Uh, you can't move. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes, we can. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't, I can't even see this can't, This one calendar, the one um, map here that says MO3 on it, and that's it, just a small area. Oh, yeah, I mean, it is a, I mean, it looks large because they've got it swelled up, but it's, um, okay, all right. If we go back to the main map, it is, um, you know, it's, it's really kind of this area in orange. Um, oh, kind of C, C2. At. Oh, down here. Yeah, there's there's C2, and then there's this outlined area right here. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but if, that, if that's too large, you know, um, we could we could slim that in, or or if, the, or if the board feels, you know, I think John was kind of saying, what what was your feeling? Paul, on, on, you know, over the last couple of years, what have your thoughts changed on manufacturing? I mean, I think now that we know more what it is, and, um, that's, that's all. Yep. Oh, Trevor. Yes. What am I asking Lisa about pre-existing manufacturing? Because isn't yeah, so, manufacturing not allowed in that district anyway? It's not it, right it now. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't allowed in the RA district. But could uh, could we write the bylaw so that we could allow manufacturing in a coexisting cultivation facility? So right. any in a current coexisting. Okay. It's it's. Yeah. It would be grandfathering in what the one the one cultivation of that we have in the town since, since we're removing you know any of that opportunity from the rest of the RA district and and I would add because I think it's justification is important is mm -hmm. you know three years ago we didn't know a lot about this whole marijuana industry and now we know more and it from what we understand Cultivation by itself is, is a difficult proposition. And so for a business to be viable, cultivation and, pro and product manufacturing going together is a more viable business. The other one mm -hmm. that we proved, the one down on Greenfield Road across from Yankee Candle, that does have the combination already. So yep. kind of we're, we're almost being consistent by allowing cultivation and product manufacturing together. Retail, I think, is a whole other thing. So we're not going to put all three together. Ever, but exactly. So, so I, that, that's kind of my, I guess, to some extent, justification of saying to, to, to make this exception. Yeah, this that, makes is actually, I think that makes sense. So is that going to be spot zoning is the next question? Well, it, it, it sort of is. That's why we need to have a, I think, a real good justification for it. Um, I, I think because we're grandfathering it, it's grandfathered. So I think it's it isn't really spot zoning. But it's not grandfathered, is my understanding. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. exist. No, the, correct, the cultivation, John? the cultivation. Right, operation. but manufacturing doesn't exist in the RA, right, John? Right, right. So you can't Never grandfather allowed. something that doesn't exist, right? But right. we're grandfathering the only cultivation in all by, by removing everything from the RA district we are grandfathering the only cultivation operation and giving them the opportunity to manufacture by just saying that we're adding manufacturing to that operation. Yeah. Natalie, it seems like the grandfathering goes to the overlay district, not to the RA, you know, overall RA district. Right. Right, because we're removing, we're removing everything from the RA district. Ex except that MO3 um, or MO2 up in the corner. Everything else is taking off the map. I, th I think that the language that um, I would suggest Lisa consider might say something like 
where there is a pre-existing non-conforming approved cultivation operation, that operation may be expanded to include a co-located manufacturing facility with approval of a special permit from the planning board. Well said. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> it was lovely, Chris, except I don't type that fast. Perfect, <laughs> perfect speech, it's perfect speech. We have it on record. <laughs> So this is Denise, so I have a question. I mean, I, I tend to agree with that, the grandfathering in, however, however that can be done. So in with other um, operations, other cultivation, are we saying that they can do co-manufacturing or not? They can. Only in the, oh, yes, only in the, only in the MO3 district and the MO2 district, not the MO1, because that would be just retail. Yep. Okay, got it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, I, you know, I don't know what kind of square footage. I mean, what do you need for um, for manufacturing? So, what size facility? So, great question. So, w when I spoke with um, with with a with a manufacturer, they they had said uh, specifically at this plant they would not be increasing the footprint at all. It just kind of it uh, infills some of the footprint that they have already. So it's not like building another building. They're, they're kind of just using the square footage they have right now in the current building and just kind of taking away some of the some of the floor plan and building more of a hard structure, you know, more cement walls instead of okay. instead of like greenhouse kind of material. It, okay. Right. It's there will be some distilling, you know, like for oil, like when you distill lavender oil from lavender. Yeah. Right. There will be some of that equipment, but mm -hmm. mostly it's chopping up, uh, you know, it's you're you're harvesting the material from the greenhouse and then you're cho chopping it up in packaging. It's not mm -hmm. manufacturing like you would think of like a commercial manufacturing plant, like, you know, the plastics company or something, but they are processing uh, the marijuana like you would process vegetables or mm -hmm. lavender or whatever. Right. Okay. Okay. This is Denise again. Isn't there, I mean, there's a current operation up in Bernardston that is doing that already. Right. Yeah. Is yes. that correct? Okay. Right. Yep. Yeah. It's All inside the same, the same right. it's inside the same building. Okay. I, I think generally they want it inside the same building because then there's less mm -hmm. security issues. And yeah. again, this is yep. something, you know, we were trying to be ahead of the game, but you know, right. transporting it to another location is a security issue. Mm -hmm. And and also it's product, you've got to protect the product from, you know, just environmental stuff as well. So processing yeah. it on site where you grow it is, is economically the only way you can really do it mm -hmm. effectively. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. So um, do you want to go through the text at all of the, uh, I mean, Chris may have had some questions on that too. And um, we went through it last night at our select board meeting. Um, before, this is they, Natalie, before we do that, can we discuss sure. one more thing on the map? Of course. Um, I think, um, Trevor, you had a different map that wasn't in color. It was um, black and white and uh, it showed kind of a new retail area. Uh, let me pull that up. Yeah. So, is that the EP direct um, one? That's a set, fixed set thing, right out behind my house. Uh, so, um, is this the map you were talking about, yeah. Haley? Yes, yes. And I have a question. In re well, it sounds like Paul has a question, and I also have a question in regards to that map, Paul. Sure. Well, the 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 black pet the the dark um, section down behind my house, that's an EP, and then uh, yeah, that's um, our expedited uh, permitting. EPD EPD yes. permitting. Yeah. Uh, are you talking about the side that's going up uh, five and ten, the, and there's there's one piece at the top here, and then two down here, um, down at the bottom. So so this right here. Um, are you talking just for, so the expedited permitting area, the, the old pickle factory is not part of any of the retail or manufacturing or co or anything? Um, that's not allowed in that section? 
the only part that is um, allowed for the manufacturing, retail, and and uh, cultivation is, is 61, 65, 6, and 9, these areas here, and the industrial plant down here. Um, and that the new area for kind of everything is this red one up here. Okay. So retail only is what you see in this gray area outlined in pink. Possibly yep. the town. If you want to do the center of town, I'm still open on that to see what your thoughts are on that. And then this northern section. Okay. Gray. That northern section is the, the question I have. Um, and in particular, is, is, it's hard to note, but five and 10 is to the right of 91 there, right? Is that correct? So there's just- yeah, it's, 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 five and 10 here. it's a whole strip, north, okay, south. That's five and 10, okay. So this is probably as much a general question, and I apologize for yeah, yeah. education on this, is um, you know we've talked about trying not to have five and 10 corridor become a Hadley route nine. And I don't know how, you know, how we can reconcile a pro-business approach with uh, then, you know, more, I don't know, more opportunities and for the retail along there. Does that have to do with the size of the lots? Um, or if you could sort of just help me with, with understanding potentially, I guess, what's allowed there now and 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 how we are reconciling that with sort of trying to keep five and ten be more farmish agriculturally looking rather than one business after another. I don't know if anyone else wants to take that, but I mean I feel like if we're going to have business in town, that's kind of the spot that it should go. It's the highest traffic. It's where you're going to get your economic development. It's already commercially zoned. Um, but what lo goes in there for actual businesses? Yeah, that's, I, that's over my head. I don't really know. In that northern area, Annalie, again, this is that's part of the sort of the that village area. I forget what it's called. Is that is that the way they used to have a uh, dances and stuff there for across from uh, where they have a uh, uh, place where they're storing unit stuff. It was up next to the vi the um, the car st the car and the and the and the uh, which has moved now, I guess. Volvo place. Yeah, that's right. That's all either side of the road. This is hillside right here at the top. So it's everything kind of from the butterfly museum down to kind of uh, the old drive-in. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I guess, Anna Legan, in general, how are we, I mean, is that idea of trying to protect five and 10 just an idea and we don't have any real ways of actualizing that or is, or? So, Anna Lee, I think, and I, maybe I missed something here, but some of that's zoned commercial already and, you know, there is commercial up there. As you get further up, though, then it becomes non-commercial again. It's RA. Correct. So we we do want to, you know, where there are businesses and buildings, we want that to stay, and we want to. If, if someone moves out, someone should be able to move in. So I just want to make sure. And, and Chris Kern I referred to this earlier. We should stick with what is already commercial. Stick with the zones that we have. I see. So where that bluish area is now is already zoned commercial. I, we yeah. have to double check. Chris, are you, do you have the other map out to verify that? Yeah, yes, we followed the exact boundaries of the existing commercial district. Okay. okay. All right, that helps me. Thank you. I, I do have a question about the Deerfield Railroad Yard. Uh, I just zoomed in on what you've got up there. And um, that's a little too big. That's in my backyard, as a matter of fact. And, and, um, that that some of that is still RA. So um, and then over on River Road, you've got a bunch of you've got a bunch of houses. So we should stick to the industrial zone um, area. Well, that was something that was done already, right? That was on the that was on this map here. Yeah, but I don't right. think you I think you didn't follow it perfectly. Um, 
Well, I, we should double I think check the that. intention, John, I think the intention is to just to go over the same district that is already zoned there. So if Trevor, Trevor, on your map, can you, can you verify what was C2 already up there? Yeah, I, I tried to just follow that C2. I mean, I made a good idea. I might have a little section here when I did it, but, but I was just doing whatever was whatever was already C2. But if, if C2 is supposed to be that big, I, you know, this was a draft map too, so I'm not sure if that if that's right. That was what we got from Perkov. Yeah. So. Um... My, John, I, I don't know how correct or incorrect it is, but the intention was to have the C2 be the MO3 um, district, the same uh, same uh, boundaries. All right, so let's do that. And if we have to go fix the C2, then maybe that's that's maybe that's what we need yeah. to do. Uh, and that's fine. Yeah, if you need to adjust that, that's fine. Yeah, it, you think, yeah. yeah no. It was, we were not drawing we were not drawing new mo3 up there it was using the same existing zoned area because i we we should and um, this will definitely as we as we know our river road folks are uh pay attention to public hearings and um, we'll get some reaction from them so we should be prepared for that and if we need to make some changes yeah. we can do that but, well, I, in my mind, if you have a marijuana uh, cultivation and manufacturing up there, it's, you know, uh, has less impact than, you know, other industrial uses. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if the available space yeah. outside of the rail yard and the quarry is used up for manufacturing of you know, growing and, and manufacturing marijuana, that's better than, you know, some of the other choices that we've had in the past. But, and, and I, I agree with you on a lot of the property up there, but right by the residences and stuff, it, it, there, should oh, be set, yeah. there should be setbacks. And so just want to clarify that. Yeah. Is that, you know, I think this was a draft map that came out of a discussion. So we should look at our original and yeah, if you need to adjust that P2, that's fine. All right. I was just trying to do what was already there. But. Yeah, no, I, I see that. Okay. All right. And all of these, well, we'll get to the wording now, but I think all of this is still yeah. under special permit, right? Of course. Yep. Okay. All right. Any other questions, planning board members, on the maps, or should we go to the. I, I have uh, one last question. Um, at our last meeting, we talked about whether we wanted to include it's the. Curtis talking. I'm sorry. Yeah, Chris Curtis. Uh, we we questioned whether we wanted to include the town center in um, the uh, in, as a retail location or not. And did that question get resolved or or um, discussed at the select board meeting? Oh well, we. We felt if there was one, someone wanted to retail downtown, we would definitely want to be looking at it very carefully. But we didn't want to rule it out. And that was why that separate um, district, no cultivation, no manufacturing, only retail. And it needed to be, we needed to look at it very carefully. So that. I mean, I wasn't against it, but I wasn't like, yeah, you know, a hundred percent. Like, this is what we need. <laughs> mm -hmm. This, this is Denise. I have a question. I know that at our last planning board meeting, I, it was either I forget which meeting, but uh, they're talking about the um, the facility in Northampton and how it was put on the outskirts of town. So I sort of had a a question about has anyone done any survey you know people who are going in and buying product are they just going there are they going to Northampton downtown what else are they doing or are they just going there because it's right off the highway getting back on and going so is it is it more detrimental to the town or is it sort of you know I mean does it make a difference I can only tell you that um, when I, I have Department of Public Health meetings down there um, and 
Homeland Security meetings down there right next to it. And mm -hmm. um, a couple of times a month before the, you know, we had COVID outbreak. And um, the people were coming. I mean, it was just a traffic nightmare and people were coming off the highway and getting back on the highway. They were not going into the town of Northampton. Right. And um, that was why we were thinking of potential have, I mean, again, you're having it more widespread at that time, putting it on the outskirts with so much traffic, it was probably okay because there was single, you know, people were single-mindedly going to buy marijuana. They weren't going to go to the other right. stores and stuff. But by the time you get a build out of this marijuana as years go on, somebody might want a retail downtown and it would be a draw. Yeah. We wouldn't necessarily get the overwhelming traffic because there are other locations now open but right. you would have a draw downtown. And that was the only reason I was supporting something like this downtown is because maybe somebody's picking up medicinal, uh, medicinal marijuana and then going out to lunch or something. It wasn't, right. you know, more like whatever, less, less desirable use maybe, um, yeah. like well, it was in Northampton because they were one of the first ones, you know, open out here. So I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of on the fence, but I don't think it's negative mm -hmm. as long as we would look at it very carefully. Yeah, D Denise, again, I mean, that's what we talked about. And I talked about, you know, having a visioning for the town and, you know, what are we really looking for in the town? You know, we talked about doing that mm -hmm. and, you know, having, um, you know, focus groups of kids, of, of, you know, young adults and then of senior citizens, what does everyone want? And, you know, I mean, people keep saying, well, there's not much in South Deerfield or, you know, what are we going to do with South Deerfield? And, you know, so I think it's good not to, I think it's good to leave it open that we could p potentially have some retail there. So I'm sorry, this is actually, so is, the, is there MO1 retail only now, the way this map is drawn? It's a little hard for me to see in the, in the center of town. No, it's not allowed in the center of town right now. And this would be new. This is part of the new zoning is that you would have the ability if someone wanted it downtown. So this, does this map show then what MO1 would be? Yeah, that pinky yeah. area. Okay. Yep. Well, if Maybe. we're still, excuse me, but if, if we're still, undecided about that is there another way of approaching it just as john had suggested another way of approaching our other issue um i don't know i mean well i also think don't forget we're preparing for a public hearing is all we're doing we're, we're trying to come up with the best we can and then we bring it to the public and i know there's going to be some input from, uh this is john wait and and i know there'll be some uh input from the public about if we zone downtown for retail. But I think it's worth, it might be worth having the conversation. And Lee, so it might be worth having the conversation if we're still ambivalent about it and, and it's just really a way of gathering information. Yeah, I mean, that's what we do at public hearings is, is get information from the public. You know, there's only seven of us, we don't, we can't make the decision for everybody, so we want their input. Um, you know, we try to do the best we can, but then we want their input. That's, that's what the this is Carolyn. Is. If if we have a public hearing, and and people are, are really don't want it, then we just pull the whole thing because, like I said, no one is really. It's right. just sort of like a future. If someone wanted it in the future, kind mm -hmm. of thing. It wasn't as a as a multiplier, as a downtown multiplier. You know, like I said, having lunch or, you know, stopping at, you know, the gift shop or whatever. Um, that that would be, I wouldn't want to rule it out, but I'm not like wild about it either. So if it looks like when we have the public hearing, people don't want it, then we just pull it. We just eliminate it. Because I don't think any one of us are like crazy about this. Mm -hmm. But there is some potential. I mean, you want to do some potential. Uh, if if it's going to be positive. So I don't know. Like I said, I'm not, I'm only on the fence as 
you want to provide you want to provide as much diversity and need and meet needs so that people will come downtown. So if you have a variety of things and people can do errands downtown in South Deerfield Village, they're not they're going to spend more money at other establishments if they have to make a trip there. You you try to solve all your issues. So if you're hungry and you had to pick up your prescription, then you would go and have lunch or something. You know. <laughs> well, and also, we're I'm sorry. This is Anne Mary Cloutier. We're talking about a product that people don't consume, like at a bar, you go and you have drinks at the bar. You don't go to the retail establishment and smoke up and then get in your car. Um, so I, I do think that there is this you know, aspect of what um, Carolyn's saying that is retail. You stop for this, you stop for that, you stop for that. You're not, no one's sitting around getting stoned dr driving around our streets, as opposed to the bars where no. people yeah. Going and having drinks and driving right. on our streets. Right. <laughs> okay. The, the, this is Denise. Okay. So if if this wouldn't happen, I mean, is it an issue a few years from now to make an amendment to the bylaw to allow it? No. Okay. You just have to go back. This is Carolyn. You yeah. just go back to town meeting and you just right. add it in. Okay. So. Yeah. Just like we're doing yeah. now. Can I please so say something? Who's who wants to talk? Uh, that Casey. Can I please say something? Oh, Casey. So the process yeah. to go back and make a change to the bylaw may preclude actually getting somebody in. We've already been approached about this. Okay. Yeah. Don't have the bylaw allowance for it. So it's kind of a oh, forward we were? thinking oh. process is thinking about this element. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I well, can't I say by whom did. or when because and unfortunately I wasn't able to assist them because we didn't have the allowance right. to do anything. But it does add a certain amount of commercial um, and retail access. Because as I was gonna say earlier, I'm around that retail establishment on five in Northampton because I do business around there a lot. Get my oil changed and all that stuff. And you see people come in, they park, they get in line, they leave. They don't go downtown, they right. don't eat. Okay. And yeah. actually, if you talk to David Narkowitz, he realizes that that was part of, you know, that's actually come up in conversations between my husband and David. So they get that that's not the best place if you want to attract people to the center of town. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I can, yeah. Well, I can, I can attest that. That's this is Carolyn. Yeah. And this is Denise again. That's exactly why I was asking that question earlier. Is it, yeah, is it an asset to have the ability to have retail downtown? Which apparently I, I think it, it could be. I think it's beneficial. This is Trevor. I think it's beneficial. And then, you know, they also would need a host agreement. So we would, community host agreement to do that. So we would be, you know, there's a lot of checks and balances that would come into play. And, but just to have that ability, we could always deny it, you know, based on, you know, not providing a host community agreement or not passing muster with a planning board for their permit. Um, so I think there's checks and balances to it, but it would allow us that opportunity if, you know, if, if, if it makes sense. So, um, do you want me to move forward with a couple other things or do you still want to you want to leave that that center in at the moment and then see what comes out of the public hearing yeah this is emily and i'm assuming that it meets all those other criteria with 500 feet from residences and schools it would, it would have to yeah we yep. checked those yep. Yep. we had maps drawn just so, to see yeah and it may and some of that may preclude some of downtown, but um, but just keeping the overlay district kind of matching the the current zoning. But um, just based on those requirements, it may some sections parcels in town may not be allowed. Huh. Yep. Hey, th this is so, Denise again. One more thing: yeah. is there is there yeah. you know if if we all think that this is you know a reasonably good idea for it to happen is there some kind of education that we can get out ahead of it so that so that people are understanding what what Anne mary said that they're not going to go in you know buy it and get stoned and drive yeah. around 
So. Sure, sure. Yeah, we, did, we had done a lot of that kind of education, and we didn't, we didn't convince everybody, and other people convinced other people one way or the other. But, yeah, there's a lot, there'll be a lot of public discussion about it, especially at town meeting, for sure. This is well, Carolyn. We have been adamant from right, right from the beginning that we wanted no social consumption establishments in town. Um, you know, so, there was all kinds of, you know, you had to license so many uh, as a percentage of your liquor license and all, all kinds of stuff so that you could be um, exempt from that social consumption establishment requirement. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were clear. That's why we had our overlay district so early on. We didn't want to be forced to take, because we are right off 91 um, and 116. We, I, I just envision that being a horror show for us um, if we had those social consumption cafes that they have, you know, at some places. So anyway, um, that has been strongly part of our bylaws, no matter what we've had. Right. So that was clear. So could I, um, I just want to share one other, uh, one other screen before we get into the text. Um, so can I just stop sharing here and then I'm going to share, uh, um, I want to share this screen. Um, so just talking about our timeline right now, we're not quite sure we can get all this done by town meeting. We may have to move to town meeting. Um, or there's discussion about that. So this is a little bit of, you know, the West Board of the Sea Zoning uh, Amendment proposal. Um, th these are the dates kind of that we're working on. Um, these are proposed timelines. So, you know, we have, we would, if, we, we would, if we settled on everything tonight, um, we would post for a hearing, like, uh, if or, it's really the planning board that would need to do all this. Um, I mean, with, with our help, obviously, but um, there would need to be a posting on Monday for a public hearing on the 20th or 19th or 20th. Um, if we kind of settled on what we what we wanted to kind of look like tonight, uh, then we would advertise on Monday. We would advertise on the 12th again, and then we'd have our, our public hearing on the 20th or so, and then special town meeting on the 22nd. Um, that. A lot of time for revision, and um, so we're not quite sure if we'll make town meeting with this bylaw change. We may have to uh, push town meeting off a bit, but just to kind of give you an idea of where we're at because of all the you know requirements for special town meeting, you know, special hearings and you know, and special town meeting and you know, post publishing of the warrants and all of that. Uh, it feels like we've been working on this a long time, but it still takes a long time to do all of this. So, um, you know, if we hold a public hearing on the 21st or the 20th, um, we need to draft more articles submitted to us on the 6th. Uh, we need to put it in the paper on the 6th. Um, you know, the planning board would maybe review this uh, amended proposal and set the date on the 5th. I think you have a meeting on the 5th. Um, you know, public hearing held, and then, you know, on the 7th, we need to sign up, you know, do the final warrant and sign it. Um, and then the play board would submit with recommendations to town meeting on the 22nd, town meeting with vote, and then we would send it to the Attorney General. So there's a lot that kind of has to happen still. Uh, it's a very tight timeline, so we're not quite sure that will all happen, but we just want to give you a, an idea of where we're at at the moment. Um, I'm just going to stop that share and then share this. So this is the uh, proposed text, and I we could go through that um, and see you know if anyone has any questions. I'm just going to turn some lights on. One second here. Some stuff and then you know just make changes dramatically uh, and then have to 
some other questions. If any, so, um, any, you know, if anyone has any questions on this, I can kind of roll through it a little bit and then just let me know if you want to stop, if you want to change anything or talk about anything. But I think it was just kind of cleaning up a bit of the language. Uh, and then, uh, you know, doing the following definitions. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, this is Annalie. I had a question on 4661 section, or just in general. I thought we were trying to remove the designation between medical and non medical and non medical marijuana. Is that that doesn't seem to be happening? Can you? Uh, I'm not sure where you're seeing that. Well, uh, right at the end of section 4661, it talks about. Uh, the last sentence there, retail sale of marijuana for non-medical marijuana adult use. Right. So. She missed yeah. that. She missed that. Do you think so? No, yeah. I, I just thought that in these new bylaws, we were going to just have it be marijuana and not delineate yeah. the and recreation. I, I, think she, I, think she, I think she missed it, Trevor. It should just be for marijuana. Uh, let's see. That last sentence. That last sentence. I think she just missed it. Marijuana for non-medical adult marijuana use in the manner that complies with state regulations. And you're thinking yeah. it should be just for adult marijuana. Okay. There's another. Yeah, I think there's another spot with that. I'll, oh, on. Yeah, okay. I thought I saw it again. I'll let you know if I see it. Oh, okay. perfect, Annalie. <laughs> I read it. I read it. <laughs> really? Um, so I think it was. Um, Trevor. Yeah. Uh, Chris, um, I'm not sure that uh, Lisa had the most recent version of the um, bylaw that the planning board and I had been working on. Um, there was a, a version that came out of the last planning board meeting that I had shared with everyone, but I'm not sure Lisa oh, got no. it in time. Uh, okay. So for example, in section 4660, there are some updates to the references to various state laws that are applicable. And that's not showing up in Lisa's version that you're looking at here. Um, okay. and there may be a number of other things that she didn't get as well. So there, there needs to, I guess, be some blending of the planning board version and the select board version of, of the bylaw that has not yet happened. All right. Should you, um, I thought we were working out the most current one. So, okay. Um, so if you, uh, do you see anything in here that's missing from that that we could add in or note? Yeah. Um, if you if you have the version that I sent out, all of the changes that the planning board had made or had discussed are shown in a in a red font. And maybe rather than kind of going through all of that in in detail, um, I'm not sure how best to do this. We we could go through the planning board's version and just make sure that everybody's in agreement on that. Well, uh, um, well, I just, this is the one that we've had in front of the town council, so I'm, uh, I'm just trying to figure out. I'm a little confused at the moment. Then. Uh, I this is John. I have them. I have them side by side, and there's not a lot of things, but there are some. I would even ask Chris if you had a few minutes to spend with Lisa or someone just to make sure all the things we talked about are in there. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we, we, don't, we don't need 14 people to go over that, I don't think. Yeah. yeah they're pretty <laughs> modest. <laughs> the, the, the differences. Yeah. Um, Chris, do you think you, this is Carolyn, do you think you could um, uh, just compare what we have here for what Lisa supposedly fixed? And what you have, and and just be able to give us a couple of highlights without, and then we could maybe have them ready for Monday, because it doesn't make sense for us to. 
I mean, no, no one's being able to look at it. Uh, no. no, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can, we can do that. Uh, again, as John said, the the differences are not that substantial. So, um, I, I think that's, I can add the planning board's changes into Lisa's version of the bylaw and give you a composite. Yeah. Um, okay. And just make sure all the, this is Carolyn again, just make sure all the non-medical adult marijuana is out and it just says marijuana. Um, Casey would like to say something. So actually we had tentatively scheduled council for Monday so that if there were things you needed to ask her, you would have access to her. Um, if Chris can either marry those things or send me his version, because I don't have it. Um, Lisa is willing to work on this. Unfortunately, she can't come on Monday. Initially, we were gonna have Lisa come, but her town meeting that she was at last night got continued to Monday. So Adam Koska is planning to join us. Um, Right. Chris, if it's easier for you to incorporate what you had for changes that we can get that to Adam, but the sooner we get it to him, the better he'll understand what it is that you had changed for planning board. Sure. I can, I can send you that all tonight. And this is for, this is number 15, just for the, just for the fifth. Yes. yes. Well, no, yes. This okay. is for our meeting on the 5th. Yeah, on the 5th, right. We scheduled for the select board to come back and talk with you all just in case. Yep. And you're going to email them out to us, the, the listing? The what? The listing of that, of this here when you get it, when you get it up, upgraded. Oh, the, uh, the updates, Chris? Is that what you mean, Paul? Yeah. Okay. I, can, yeah. I can't I can't make it out. I've got a small little computer here and, and you're trying to read this here. If we have the originals, then we could look at them and have them for uh, for Wednesday for Monday. I mean, we can print Monday them in the foyer for you if you want if you would like. Go up to the office and get it, you mean? Yeah, we can print whatever you need and then you can pick up a paper copy in the foyer. OK, sounds good to me. So when we, when we get down to page four, when it talks about the three marijuana overlay districts, you know, that, that may change based on the discussion with Lisa on, um, you know, whether we need, I think we still keep the three, and then we just may decide that that central one disappears, and we keep the ML3 up at that top northern section. Um, so on, this is Chris again. On the on the page that you're on right now, uh, four six six five uses permitted and regulations or and regulated. I guess it says that is where the, there's um, it appears to me very substantive change um, being made by town council, where there's a lot of deletions. You can see what it appears to me is that she is taking away the special permitting process and replacing it with a with marijuana uses being allowed as of right yeah, uh, yeah. that's that's not we don't that should not be in there at all i saw that so is this, that was the question i think we got we had when we got back to the um to the table and then because she had a lot of i think site plan reviews versus special permit um and, it, and I wasn't sure, really, I'm, for me, I'm not really sure that much what the difference is. is. Is there anywhere that you felt like we needed a special permit versus a site plan review? Yes, this is John. We want the special permit. Site plan review, as we've all learned, does not help us prevent something coming into town that we don't really want. Site plan is much more, um, it, it gives us more flexibility, and I think for, for the marijuana, we need it. Does, does, the planning, is, does the planning board agree with that? So, so this is Carolyn. I just want to clarify. So, John, you feel like you want the special permit for all marijuana, not just site plan review? 
all marijuana. That's the way it was that we never, we never questioned okay. that at all. all right. That's never been questioned. That's fine. Yep. No, that's fine. That's okay. Fine. Then we just, we weren't sure what you wanted to do. <laughs> I wanted to make sure we had retained, we, I wanted to make sure we retained special permit for the downtown area for sure, because that was, um, you know, it was going to be much more uh, concerning if we got something that was less desirable. So, and, and the other was just in the existing areas, more or less. So I wasn't so concerned, but it, I have no problem if you want to put back special permit. Yeah, it's still, uh, a enough, it's still a new enough industry, again, John, that we want to keep special permit uh, authority. This, this is Denise. I think we changed the marijuana retailer to having a special permit in MO2 to include that. Yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah, the, the planning board's version of the bylaw requires a special permit for all marijuana uses, as, as John indicated. Yes. The town council's version allows them all as of right with, with site plan approval, yeah. site plan review. There, there is a big difference between special permit and site plan review. Yeah. With special permit, you have the ability to say yes or no, or yes with conditions. With site plan, review you you do not have the ability to say yes or no you you can simply put conditions yeah i'm fine i'm fine doing special permit that's fine there's no areas where you feel like you want less yes or no you want yes or no everywhere it makes sense to you to have it yes everywhere? yes okay thank you so, we'll John, John, yeah. so that will change that will change about 90% of what the town council put into the, the bylaw um, because most of her deletions have to do with that issue. Um, okay. Yep, that's fine. Okay. So, um, so that was uh, page four. Um, so then. Uh, is this also, this is, I guess I'm on page five, is this also a continuation of that same kind of discuss, discussion? Um, let's take a look at her notes for a special permit. So those criteria. Um, oh, she was thinking the, um, I think she was, she was, she was uh, getting rid of pro, uh, project in, Design setback because it was duplicative. You was already in the special permit already. I think that was the only reason she was crossing that out. Um, and then, um, so here's where we had talked about in section three, we had talked about maybe going instead of 2,000 feet to 300 feet and going from building to building instead of property line to property line. Is that still acceptable with the planning board? Um, yeah, did we make those? I think they I were thought, changes. We we did make those same yeah. types of changes in the planning board's version as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Um, right. And then. So we were in 500 feet, which we, yeah, that stays the same, right? The schools and children, yeah, you know, children and motels and all that. So that was all the same. Um, so we just capitalize some stuff there. Um, hours of operation, uh, so marijuana establishment, fine. Um, I think that was also a Yeah, I think this section here, section eight, she said it was repetitive with a bomb. Yes. Okay. There um, were several sections that she made some changes that well, she uh, took were out, repetitive. Chris, can you just double check? This is John. Chris, just double check. We didn't take it out. I don't know. We, we didn't. Which one? Section eight on. Um, mm -hmm. D8, I think it is. 
Yeah. Under um. Well, I guess it does. That stuff does kind of fall into special permits, so maybe it doesn't need to be there. I think that's why she took that out. Um, yeah. And then, um, I think we were changing the inspector with the commissioner here for building. Is that a building that, that was pretty minor, but just changing that to, to commissioner? Yeah. Whatever it had. Trevor. Yeah, that was the section that you're pointing to now that you're showing them is the section that um, you specifically wanted to draw people's attention to the fact that it was going to be um, cert issued in certain ways. She's outlined it here. Oh. Non transferable, limited right. term expiration. Yeah. Right. And I, I like this is John. I like being specific about if there's a change of ownership, uh, it comes back to mm -hmm. site plan approval. Yeah. That was one of Lisa's comments as well. Yeah, that's good. So this is Chris. Um, what you're showing now um, is the section where she has um, removed the requirement for uh, bonding. Yeah. And I wondered what the requirement was there. We talked about this last night, um, and you know, when I brought up, well, we do this for you know for for, for zoning, uh, for solar. You know, we did this on, on one of the solar plants, and she said you really can't, you know, if you're not doing this for any other, so ABC, you know, tomato plant company, you're not requiring them a bond to clean up their stuff. Uh, she said you, you would do this if it was on public property, but for private property, it just she didn't think it would hold up. Um, I said, well, with solar, you know, we're asking them to clean up, you know, the solar panels and stuff. And she said, well, with the, with the marijuana facility, what are you asking them to do? Is there going to be a building left? You don't ask any other building to do that. So you I don't mean, ask any other retail or commercial to do that same thing. So her caution yeah. was, if you ask, if you ask that, it could create a situation. And we weren't sure. She was looking for your intent, I guess. Was maybe that was she was curious what your intent was there. Yeah, it may not be enforceable as well. I was just going to say she recommended it. It probably would not be enforceable in court. I'm okay with it. I agree. Yeah. I, I think it, one, this is John. I think at one point we thought people would set up big greenhouses out in the middle of a field or something, and they might look ugly if they just abandoned them. But now we're talking about this is all done in warehouses. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the last part was, uh, oh, so this was, um, thinking that they, they should be, you know, um, processed in the order that they come into town, um, uh, versus deciding, uh, so I'm not really sure what, what this was about, but she was thinking that, uh, so what she's talking about is, um, they're processed in the order that the applicant files. Yes, it is not necessary to include this language as it is inherent in the special permit that the permit is discretionary. Yeah, that seems fine. Okay. Um, I think the comment John, is we don't do that for other permits. Yeah, I don't know why we 
put that in there. Yeah. Um, let's see. And findings. Uh, yeah. All right. So these things just look at one minute. I'm not sure why that site plan was taking out. Um, unless it wasn't loud or something. Uh, all the findings listed, I think. And then. Uh, oh, our use table is getting wider. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I, and I think a lot of this will change now that we're just going back to special permit for, for items. Um, yes. So, that, that's fine. We can do that. Um, So I guess, um, so really just getting back to that initial map discussion we had before is that we would have it in ML3, we would just have cultivation, manufacturing, and the associated, you know, things like transportation and, you know, testing facility, that kind of thing. Um, ML2 would be kind of everything allowed by special permit, except for social consumption. And then ML, ML1 would be strictly, um, uh, marijuana retailer, and then um, I'm not sure why marijuana in, independent testing laboratory. Can somebody weigh in on that? I'm not sure why that one is. Do you have that with a retailer in the same building? What she said before, um, in the uh, la the last time we talked to her, if you recall, Trevor, she said that a lot of these things are can be coexisting. So why would you eliminate the ability for the yeah. operation if it does have a coexisting use to not be able to do it? Okay. I think that's what she said. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not sure. Like the testing lab, I think is either should be the same as product manufacturer or or retailer. I, I guess it could go with either of them. So. Special testing permit. lab could go with research facility. Yeah. Right. But do we want to let that in MO1, I guess is the question. I, I didn't think so. We could do a special permit for that. Yeah. They're, they're pretty small operations, so. Right, right. So maybe it makes sense. Yeah. For a special permit. Okay. So, um, I guess that was just mm -hmm. kind of the wording I think on the end. Um, so, so Casey, do you think you have what you need to kind of go back to Lisa to talk about the special permit in all these areas and? And then I guess uh, Chris Curtis would, would kind of melt, I, I guess, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I thought I had the most current cleaning board one that I sent on to everybody, but, um, but anything that you changed and put together, um, if you see anything different in here that needs to be added for her review too? What I would suggest, Trevor, at this point is to have Chris send that to me and schedule a meeting with me and Lisa and Chris. It makes more sense. It'll go faster. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, because what we want is Chris to put in his amendment somewhere that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm wondering if the planning board, maybe we even kind of vote on that to give, uh, let Chris represent us in making these changes. Is that, Yeah. you guys feel good about that? Yeah. Hey, this is Denise. I, I, ju I just wanted to go back to the independent testing laboratory. Isn't, isn't that a precursor to, um, to manufacturing? Or are they two separate things? I mean, wouldn't you be testing before you manufacture or not? They are two different things. Oh, go ahead, John. You probably don't want to know about this. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it has to be an independent. Um, so it's not just testing stuff, but it's an independent lab that has to test it, I think. Yeah. Any retailer would have to send their stuff to an independent company. Okay. So it's a separate, yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, so much THC or so much of this in it, and you know, 
So yeah, it's a completely separate decision. It's okay. Usually a small facility, you know, just a little testing lab somewhere. Okay, so what you're saying is that is a, co a testing laboratory right. wouldn't reside with the manufacturing facility. Right. Okay. Probably not. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I mean, they may have their own little kind of testing in-house kind of thing, but it wouldn't be for uh, you know for any of their you know licenses or anything like that. Thank you. So I guess um, I think that the select board is done at this point. Is there any other questions or any public comment to the select board? Uh, Chris Curtis, um, I noticed that um, Lisa uh, wanted to prohibit marijuana social consumption operations uh, everywhere in town. The one comment I would have is that that term um, should be defined in the definition section. And if she could okay. put that on her list of things to do, that would be great. Okay. Looking good. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, I guess I think the select board is done with our meeting. Anyone have any other questions? Or I can't thank the planning board enough uh, for, for coming and jumping through hoops here. We're hoping we can get this all together and, and, and on town meeting, but you know, it would rely on the planning board to set up, you know, set a date. Um, if Monday we can get all this stuff together, or tomorrow we can get it all together and and get it out to the papers to advertise for, for a hearing, that would be wonderful, but you know, I leave that in the plain board's hands, so. Great. Good. So I would make a motion to adjourn the select board meeting. I have a second. I unmuted finally. I have seconded. it. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Carolyn. Thank you, David. Come on. Are you, are you finished? Yes. Okay. yes. Planning board, do we, planning board, do we have any other uh, matters to take up? No. Motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Oh, I second. <laughs> Okay. It's a, Denise uh, moved and Anne Mary Thank seconded. You. Thank you. All those in favor, let's do a roll call. Um, Denise? Yes. Uh, Paul? Yes. Anna Lee? Yes. Anne Mary? Yes. John Waite? Yes. So we are adjourned until uh, October 5th at 7 p.m. We'll come back to this. Thanks very much, Chris. Thanks, and. Sir. Jennifer and Casey and everybody else. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wait, isn't it six o'clock or is it seven o'clock? It was seven. supposed to be six originally. Hold on, let me look. Oh, sorry. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. Trevor, thank you for doing this. No. You did a great oh, yeah, no, six o'clock. Six o'clock on the fifth. Okay. Six o'clock yeah. on the fifth. It's six o'clock. It's six o'clock, not six seven. Okay. Yeah.